How's your uh, first spring at SMU going? Really good. Uh, fired up about the guys. I love their commitment to work. Want to get better. I think we got a bunch of hungry guys. Uh, not a ton of experience there, but guys who are kind of unproven, who, who are ready to be proven. Tell us a little about how you ended up here. Did you see an opening and reach out to Coach Simons? Did he come find you a little, when he had it was, a spot? It was a little bit of both. So actually, uh, Coach Simons tried to hire me. Uh, I don't even know what year that was. One of those years ago, it didn't end up working out, but we stayed in touch because we kind of watched each other tape. You know, when I was at Western Kentucky, he was at Liberty, and we had a lot of some of the same defensive schemes. Hmm. Uh, so that, like we kind of admired each other from afar, and then we got connected. And then we we're all there. There's an almost, and then that didn't happen. And then fast forward to now, then it opened up, and now I'm here. That make the conversation pretty quick once you yeah, connected it was this quick. time. Yeah, I just had to make sure that you know I was still the same guy that you talked to before, and I was making sure he was still the same guy that I had talked to before. But once we kind of got a good feel for each other, it was kind of a match made in that. You mentioned some of the guys that are inexperienced. One guy who isn't, especially in the scheme, is a mod Walker. Have yeah. you? You and him traded some notes as you've kind of yeah. come into the scheme and things like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool because like when I first got here and I was trying to learn, I was like, Ahmad probably knows this better than I do, so <laughs> I want to make sure I say it right. And then I kind of look at him first to when I say it, and then when he shakes his head, I'm like, all right, I got it. But now he's really sharp. Uh, he can play, you know, Mike and Will. He knows all the pieces and how they fit around him. He knows all the signals. So it was really good to kind of use him as a, as a gauge when you're talking to the room because he knows it so well. But the cool part was, again, he's not, he's not closed-minded at all. He's still open to, to getting better. He knows there's areas of his game that he can improve. Uh, he loves to be challenged. He loves to be pushed. And he's a football junkie, right? So um, that's kind of how I'm built as well. So uh, with him knowing the defense, now I can kind of focus on more of the things that he has to get better at, not, not necessarily trying to learn what to do, but how to do it better. Um, and that's what that's kind of where we connected, and uh, he saw that I could help him as coach. What's it kind of like teaching the scheme as you're kind of learning the scheme, yeah. and does that almost make it easier to teach because you're kind of figuring out how you understand it? Yeah, I think, well, at least, at least for me, um, I've been in a few schemes and systems, uh, and I always tell people, fortunately slash unfortunately, when I was a college linebacker, I played in a bunch of different defenses, so I didn't have, like, I didn't have the luxury of having the same coordinator. Uh, every year and playing one scheme. So fast forward to now, where I can kind of rely on all those experiences as a player, having to, to learn the scheme so that I could play. Uh, it's kind of stuck in my brain. And then obviously my, I grew up, my dad was a linebacker. So growing up around, I never watched football, like just to enjoy the game, you know, was always sit down and watch this guard pull, or watch this pass. It was, we were always like studying tape, watching football. So I've been around the game a long time, but you know, it's really just learning the terminology uh, how Coach Simon wants me to communicate and how, how they've said things here in the past because uh, my job is to get on their page, not not the other way around. And I want to be able to teach them what they know and just kind of kind of build upon it. But always a little bit of a learning curve when you walk in the door. It's more so just trying to speak the right language. Uh, but once you get that down, it's pretty good. What have you seen from Alex Kilgore? Really excited about that young man. Uh, he's very powerful. Uh, he's ready-made. You know, he's built. He's big, long, strong, and fast. Uh, you know, the ups and downs of a freshman uh, to be anticipated, but he's been very impressive so far. I uh, love the way that he strikes and comes downhill. Um, he's done a good job of picking up the scheme, uh, balancing, uh, balancing college and life, you know, and uh, in addition to pressure uh, getting put on by his coaches. But he's a kid who's, um, he accepts coaching well, but you can coach him really hard. You know, some freshmen, you kind of got to push him to the wall and pull him back. There is no pull him back. You know, you give him all of it, let him mess it up. And he doesn't really mess it up again once he gets it. So really excited about him. Chris Adamora goes from safety to linebacker. Yeah. And obviously, linebackers in today's world got to be fast, so that sure. kind of makes a lot of sense. What have you seen from him in that transition to linebacker? Another guy I'm excited about, um, again, because he doesn't know the position. So for me, it's always really cool to, um, to, 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 to teach someone who doesn't know, like, at all. So just to watch him, like, take his first steps. You know, you get mm -hmm. proud of your kids when they crawl, when they, when they take their first steps. And... Um, he's a, again, when I talk about that hunger, you talk about Kilgore on one end, who's a freshman, but you talk about Chris, who's played football, but not linebacker particularly. Um, you see the hunger and the want. You know, those guys are always texting me. Those guys are always like, how can I do this better? Or what did you mean with this? Or a coach, that makes no sense. Explain it to me again, which I love that open honesty, because that's how we can build that relationship and I can challenge and demand of him. But through these 15, uh, 14 practices, Chris has like steadily improved. Um, 
I've challenged him. You know, he's had to work on his block destruction. He's had to learn, work on reading his keys and, and seeing those movements. But he puts the work in, so he's able to get out of it what he wants. Alex is such a young guy, should be still finishing up his senior year of high school. But when you look at someone like him, who's new to college, and Chris, who's new to the position, is the teaching process different for you? A little bit, yeah, because Chris understands football on a different level than, than Alex does because of the position. So for, for Alex, he doesn't have a reference point. So for Chris, I can talk to him, well, if the safety's here, that means you have to be there because he, he understands, well, I was in that position. Now I'm just learning my alignment there. And then it's, it's, there are things that are similar depending on the safety does it from deep, the linebacker does it from closer. So I can put it in that context for him to, to understand, whereas Kilgore has like, he's just going to do what I tell him to do because he, he doesn't know enough about anything. Jaquandis has only been here, you know, this is only his second season, but he mm -hmm. might be the most veteran SMU linebacker. Mm -hmm. What have you seen from him as he's kind of growing maybe into a little bit of a leadership role sure. and, and kind of ready to take on some more? Yeah, he's a guy, again, another guy I've challenged when I walked in the door. I was like, so you, you played a little bit, and now, and now it should be your time, but I challenged him, I'm not going to make this easy for you. Nothing's going to be given to you, and you shouldn't want it to be, so I'm going to make you earn it, you know, every day, and he's responded to that. You know, when I pull him to the side and give him a coaching point, he's eyes wide open, digesting what I'm saying, he processes it and he goes and executes. So again, I don't think anybody in the room is, is a complete guy, but I think they're all, I've been able to challenge them and get more out of them. And I think we're all like, we're all on the same page together. So through the challenges and watching him trying to take the next step to become a guy, to consistently make those plays and get aligned and be a communicator, be confident and just let that energy kind of ooze out of you as, as you're on the field. And I think that takes him to the next level. So I'm able to find those moments, challenge him, he fixes it, then we take the next step, then we take the next step. And then we get to game day, which we got time for, and we'll figure out uh, how the dust will settle when we get there. With the defensive line that you guys are playing mm -hmm. behind uh, with that size, how much does that help you guys you know, be able to see things easier Listen, and things I, like that? I, I tell the linebackers all the time, like you want a good defensive line in front of you. Right, it makes you a way better linebacker when those guys can play. Because if they don't block them, you don't even got to worry about it. Right, because if they come up to you fast, those guys are going to make the play. So those guys demand double teams. They do a great job with their hands. Coach Thibodeau does a great job getting those guys coached up and getting them ready to go. So between the combination of having those guys in front of us, it gives us a really clear picture uh, as linebackers. Right, I'm able to see my gap. I'm able to see it close. And then sometimes those guys do a good job of closing the B gap and the A gap, which allow guys like Chris or the faster guys, or Quan, who, who's got experience a little bit, they see it all close. Now they're kind of free to just play ball, you know? So it's been a really good, um, it's really good to learn in front of a really good defensive line because it, it makes it easier so you can see it versus me saying, hey, you're supposed to be a gap, but I don't know if that guy's gonna be in this gap, this gap, or this gap, and you're kind of trying to wait and see. But when the picture's clear, you can use your instincts and your vision, you're able to play and learn quickly. When you, when you evaluate and recruit linebackers, uh, what do you look for? Uh, twitch. That's the first thing I look for. Guys who can put their foot in the ground and, and uh, who can go. Because that, that part, I, I can't get it out of them. You know, that's God given. That's, you blame your parents. You know, <laughs> uh, but I, I love the twitch, especially in today's game, like you mentioned. The guy's got to be twitchy to be able to, to beat the offensive lineman to the spot. Because the offensive lineman, maybe not long fast, but they got really good quickness for big guys. And if you're slow footed, and the core, you know, they're going to get up on you. They're going to have angles, and your job's going to be harder because they're bigger than you. Well, in addition to that, i got to be able to run out there with this receiver who's, you know, all kind of routes and cone drills that make your, like, eyes cross, you know, when you're looking at the receiver's move. Um, so if you don't have that initial quickness, I think it makes it tough to be successful. And then the, the next part is just length, not necessarily height. You want long arms to be able to create separation in front of you or affect passing windows or to be able to have coverage uh, capabilities. So between your feet and your length, I think those are kind of the two traits that I like to see. When you think about your playing career and the previous spots in your coaching career, what system most closely resembled what you're teaching now, either in overall scheme or specifically to what you're asking of the linebackers? I think we did, uh, there's a lot of similarities from what I did, uh, what we did at Western Kentucky uh, to what we're doing now. Because again, that's why I was so comfortable coming here. I just had to learn how Coach Simon said it. But as far as the execution of it, we, we've done a lot of the similar uh, same things. So that part carried over for me. And then um, college-wise, I don't, I don't know that we did much of what we've done here. You know, a little bit, uh, still some two-backs and full-backs in there. <laughs> so a little bit different game at that time. My fiance does Duolingo, so she's learning another language. And I'm just kind of wondering, how do you go about learning another 
language yeah. of the same scheme. I mean, there's no app for that. <laughs> there is not. Yeah. I always wish that, I always said that I wish that people, like, you would just come up with a universal football language. So yeah. I could make an app and everybody speaks the same. So yeah. you can walk in the door and be good. But unfortunately, <laughs> there's not that. Um, so it's just like going back to college for me. You know, mm -hmm. the way I learned in college is um, I hear, I watch it, I hear it, and I have to write it down like three or four times. So mm -hmm. once I write it down three or four times, then, then I pretty much get it. So that's kind of my routine, my exercise. I hear the word. If I have something similar to it, I'm just like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, this is this. So I can remember what the technique and stuff is. And then I, I literally say that word in my brain, and then the other word comes out. Mm -hmm. So, and I share that with my guys, too, because I think it's, it's cool for them to know that I have my own learning process. Mm -hmm. uh, as a coach, I, I had to learn that, so I'm able to, to learn. Mm -hmm. Right, and I share that with them that they got to find their own process. And once you identify it, you'll carry it the rest of your life. And I just have to keep my process, and I've done it for a few years now, and it's still working for me. So mm -hmm. I keep it up. You seem to have a pretty good rotation. How important is it to mix those guys around so somebody doesn't get too comfortable with just one person next to them? And then if a situation comes and it's somebody else, yeah, that it changes on them. How, how do you kind of? pick and choose how to mix them in there. It's just kind of a day-to-day -day thing. You really want to reward the guys who've had a good practice before, you know, so that you may, maybe they get the first rack or the first reps or the first team periods. Uh, you give them the first opportunity. Or if a guy is kind of slacking the day or trying to figure it out and not executing the right way, then you bump the guy up. So it keeps everybody on their toes. Um, I kind of have a plan going into practice, but oftentimes that plan is thrown, thrown out just because I, I can't account for what's going to happen on the field. And I just kind of, and they all know that, and they all understand that, but that keeps them like on their toes. That's the pressure, that's the challenge to execute so that coach can keep rewarding me. And sometimes it's just random. Sometimes just like you get in, because I just want to see what, if they're ready to go. You know, get one or two plays and then sub a guy in to see who can transition or a guy, just whatever, because all those are valuable lessons. Because I don't know, again, right now, I can't say who the, who the starters are going to be, who's going to play 100 reps, or who's going to play 50, 50 reps. I, I don't know any of that. So. This is training for that. So if you're the guy that's coming coming in second, I got to be able to trust that I've seen you do in a practice that you've gone mid period when you weren't supposed to go in and go in and, and execute, right? Or if you're the starter and there's substitutions or different packages, you go that way. And uh, for me, that's kind of how we how we've been setting it just to keep the the challenge going. One more, if you have it. Some of the players that we've talked to this spring have talked about what they've learned on the field and then said, obviously they've got work to do over the yeah. summer on their own. As a new coach on the staff, what's your work to do on your own between now and when camp opens in August? For, for me, the new work is to find the, the, the little things that I can get the guys better. Because I think once the, once the players know that you can get them better, like they keep coming back. So like my process after the spring, I'll go back and watch just Quan and watch all of his reps, every single rep that he's taken. So I'll break down his steps, I'll break down his block destruction, I'll break down his drops, and I'll take my notes on that and I'll give Quan that paper. And so he can like see what I see, and then we get on the same page. And then after I give him that, and he watches that same cut up, then I'll have a list of, of drills or things that he can do on his own so that he can fix the problems. And then now he'll see that, work on it all summer, and then he gets to camp, and he should see himself like improve. And then he's like, now, Coach, what else you got for him? You got anything else? And then that's how we keep the relationship going.